Hello. Uh, you see the title, Conceptualization of Medical Knowledge. Okay, it works. Uh, the problem I'm talking about is there is more and more relevant medical knowledge. From the previous talks today, you could realize that is literally true. From each of these previous speakers, you can see that every day we, we know more and more. We learn more. We have no, uh, new procedures, telemonitoring. We have new measuring devices and so on. So the medical knowledge is enormously increasing, literally every day. And what is the classical solution? The classical solution is that uh, medical no do uh, doctors have to know more and more. And what we are doing, we are introducing specializations, and then we have sub-specialization, sub-sub-specialization, and so on. But this solution introduces another problem, communication of that knowledge among the people. You know better about that than I do. So uh, where I see the solution, the solution is to give the computers do the work. So what we have to do? We have to integrate knowledge into computers and let them help us in, in complex knowledge-based tasks. We are talking about conceptualization of knowledge. It means, at first, collecting relevant knowledge and its systematization. And in the second step, its representation in a form that it may be used by machines, by computers, but at the same time, it must be easily understood and updated by humans. Potential applications are enormous. Here are just a few. Intelligent patient monitoring, early warning systems, decision support systems, and so on. But also, semantic integration of patient data from various sources. Just to mention a few. What are benefits? Integration of medical knowledge of different specializations. Because we have humans that have limited mind. But for machines, that is not the limit. Another thing that perhaps we are not thinking about is ubiquitous availability of the best medical practice. So today you have best medical practice for example, I don't know, in Sweden, you can easily transport it, that knowledge to Croatia, I don't know, even to Africa. And you can, if it is conceptualized, you can do it in minutes. That is something that is really interesting. And what I want to stress, that I strongly believe that conceptualization of medical knowledge and conceptualization in general of human knowledge is for sure our future. Today when we talk about knowledge, we uh, discriminate two types of knowledge, descriptive and procedural. I want to say that some things are already today present, they are valuable. So in descriptive knowledge, we can talk about dictionary, ta dictionaries, taxonomies, and ontologies. And today, we already have dictionaries. I don't know how you're aware of them, I am. We have two OMLS, that is Unified Medical Language System, that I prefer. We have also SNOMED, that is standard, Standardized Nomenclature of Medicine, of clinical terms. And that's it. It's available in English, Spanish, Japanese, Russian, I don't know, in a few languages. These dictionaries also represent uh, partially good taxonomies. What does it mean? Dictionaries introduce concepts and they define them very precisely. Taxonomy means a tree of concepts. So this WMLS and SNOBED already partially present good taxonomies. <clears throat> the next or the last stage of descriptive knowledge are ontologies. Beside concepts and taxonomies, it means hierarchy, 
Ontologies include also relations. Today, there are numerous uh, 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 development in ontologies, but we must say it is still in experimental phase. Uh, the second type of the knowledge is so-called procedural knowledge. <coughs> it is typically expressed in the form of rules. It includes explicit medical knowledge, but also what is known as the tacit knowledge. There is a lot of knowledge present in the heads of medical doctors, but it is often difficult to express it in the form, that in the form of rules that can be uh, used by the machines. So, uh, procedural knowledge, presentation, what we are trying to do today is to present it also in the ontological form. I must say <coughs> that procedural knowledge have been already formalized medical uh, procedural knowledge in so-called expert systems many years ago. And they, these systems have been very successful. What is the difference when I say ontological? In expert systems, we formalize that knowledge for one concrete application. What we want today to formalize in an ontology not having in mind a specific application. And that is the challenge. Uh, here I'm talking and stimulated this talk by the Hartwig project. It lasted from 2006 and 2009, and we participated in that project and we had to develop the heart failure ontology. Ontology descri describing the domain of heart failure. We did it. It includes about 2,000 instances, 200 classes, and about 100 properties. So it is uh, today publicly available. You can have a look on the web. It is completely publicly available. And I must say, say I'm pleasure that my colleague, Alan Jovic, who did it the most the practical work of developing the ontologies today with us. So if you have very concrete questions, you are welcome. Uh, and what we are actually proud of, we used it, it was developed for the project. I'll show you uh, how we used it in the project. After the project ended, it has been used by at least two outstanding in institutions for very different tasks. So why I like that? Because we didn't have in mind their, application, their applications. And they managed to use the same knowledge for other tasks. Just for, the, uh, for illustration that you, uh, I can't go into details what ontology means and what means heart failure ontology. So at first we have classes. At the basic level we have these four classes, heart failure concept, patient characteristics, testing and treatment, that is shown on the left side of the, okay, you can see that here. Also, classes have subclasses and instances, that is taxonomy. Concretely, uh, we have patient characteristics, you perhaps see better than I do. Then we have demographic characteristics, diagnosis, other patient characteristics, signs and symptoms. And these subclasses may have further subclasses like diagnosis have cardiovascular system related subclass that again have some subclasses like blood cell disorder, circulation disorder. Uh, on the left side, you, perhaps you see, I'm not sure, some numbers. These numbers demonstrate the number of the instances that are in some of these classes. So as I said, in total we have about 2,000 instances and for the circulation disorder, there are 16 of them and they are seated here. That are instances that are contained in this class. And finally, so we have concepts, we have taxonomy, subclasses, that is left, medium, and then have what is on the right. Classes are connected by properties, 
denoting relations among instances. Examples of relations is indicated by, treated by, risk factor, commonly accompanied by, and so on. About 100 of them in this ontology. Just for illustration, the type of knowledge that can be presented. Heart valve disease is a class. It is connected with another class, signs and symptoms, by the property indicated by. This structure enables us to state that valvular heart disease, that is an instance from the class heart valve diseases, is indicated by this PNER, that is instance from the class signs and symptoms. Just for illustration. So, this is descriptive knowledge. Now, when we de demonstrated that on, in our project, we were very correctly asked by medical doctors, okay, that's very nice, but how are you go going to help people with that? And we had to agree. So, what we actually need besides descriptive knowledge, that is procedural knowledge. So, procedural knowledge are the rules, or better to say, necessary and sufficient conditions that something is true. I selected here, here a procedural knowledge, a rule for systolic heart, heart failure. Concretely, we have two different uh, uh, rules for systolic, the first one being about left ventricular ejection fraction, and that is second one. So I'm not going to, uh, to details, you perhaps better understand that I do. So that is a rule describing procedural knowledge. In this project, uh, in the ontology development, we have divided uh, the procedural knowledge into ten functional subtasks in order to organize that knowledge and to help us develop it. Here are the titles of that uh, subtask. So we have rules related to heart failure diagnosis, alternative or additional diagnosis, high failure severity assessment, and so on. This, uh, this picture demonstrates you how we managed to integrate procedural knowledge, it means rules, into ontology. So here, here on the left, again, we have a taxonomy of classes. But now, this is taxonomy of so-called defined classes, Perhaps if you manage to see that some of the classes have some white equal sign. It means that these classes oh sorry, are defined. And here is the example how the rule for the systolic heart failure is specified for the ontology. Now we came to this decision making. Just for the illustration, no details. Now we have descriptive ontology, integrated with procedural knowledge, and what we have to do? We have patient data, and we have to integrate, when we have asked question about a specific patient, we have to integrate specific that patient data into ontology, the complete uh, reasoning is inside the ontology, and the results of the re uh, reasoning are in the ontology. When the reasoning finishes, the results of the reasoning are presented to the user. Concretely for the project, it looked like this. It may look in many different ways. That's an example. So, after asking questions about a specific patient, you can have a, a pretty large series of, of conclusions. One is selected here, diagnosed heart failure, diastolic positive, for example, and N is all rule-based systems, you can get explanation. You can get explanation why this concrete rule has failed. 
So this is a short talk without uh, details, but I want to say to medical doctors, especially med medical scientists, medical doctors working in science, and especially young people working for their PhD, that I strongly suggest to start thinking about conceptualization of medical knowledge. Uh, the gains can be at different levels. At the basic level, it's enough that you use already conceptualized knowledge. As I said, we have some, something already today. By using concept from conceptualized knowledge, medical knowledge or medical documents that you produce, including your scientific papers, will be more precise and easier to understand. But now assume that you start thinking about doing conceptualization yourself. What is the challenge? The knowledge must be precisely defined. What is even more problem, that typically you have to achieve consensus among medical experts. And often that is not an easy task to achieve. But if you manage to do that, then the results may have long-term relevancy and broad applicability. So hard work, but potentially very valuable. By conceptualization of the results of our work and research, the international visibility may significantly increase. Why? Because we make it usable, applicable, to a broad audience. Conclusions. Con conceptualization of medical knowledge is the future. The consequences of, co of using, of having conceptualized knowledge will be significant for medical practice in all its segments. From research, out automated system design data handling, semantic integration, for example, and complete organization of the healthcare. By working on conceptualization, we help that relevant knowledge is collected and it is explicitly and precisely defined. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. Are there any questions, uh, audience? <coughs> Thank you very much for this uh, talk. Um, we have used the same ontology editor, ProtoJ, mm -hmm. in one of our projects, and that was a more simple project, was for glucose management. For, uh, sorry, for? Glucose management. Okay. So, but we found two fairly uh, complicated uh, results. One was that it was fairly complicated to evaluate the system, so my question is, how have you evaluated? And the second one was it was very complicated for doctors, for clinical doctors, to enter rules in an ontology and editor. Can you comment on that? I can. I can. Can I start from the second one? <laughs> um, we didn't manage to achieve that medical doctors start entering rules and knowledge, also descriptive knowledge. It was uh, completely done by technical people. And that was the major problem. So technical people had to read medical literature, medical guidelines completely for the heart failure and to put the knowledge into it. I really hope in the future uh, uh, it will be possible that, or it is really expected that medical people will enter that knowledge. But at the first stage, we have to demonstrate that it is possible and useful. So it was done by technical people. Validation. <coughs> um, that is the big point also in this project. Uh, I wouldn't say we validated the system. What we have validated? We have validated that the system can give reasonable and useful suggestions. What we haven't validated, that it is useful in everyday medical practice. 
Is that the answer yes. to that? But our problem is that you have to validate all rules in the, in, in the ontology database. And because you have hundreds of rules yeah. and they are related to each other, it's very complicated to validate them. Uh, I th thank you for the question. That was also our problem. But if I may return, if I manage to return, no. Uh, to this slide, what we did, we, uh, in typical, uh, let's say, expert systems or ontologies, uh, rules are unordered. And really, hundreds of rules that are mass. What we did, we structured medical uh, uh, rules. We structured them in a hierarchy. So, this is ontological representation of rules. So we managed to some extent to organize procedural knowledge. And I think that helped us significantly to maintain that knowledge and we didn't have major problem in, in validation in that sense you are talking about. Yes, but we are using the system now for two years mm -hmm. and almost every week we found an error. <laughs> there are some relations, it's very complicated. It is. No, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I understand you completely. Uh, uh, I will say in our approach, we didn't have this. Uh, uh, we, I know you are talking about uh, exactly because we manage to organize procedural knowledge. Because our procedural knowledge, no, not only descriptive knowledge, but procedural knowledge is a hierarchy of concepts. Okay. Is there another question? Thank you, Dragon, for excellent presentation. You know that I was a little part of this project, the supervisor, and we collaborate a lot. As a clinical cardiologist, I'm a little bit disappointed why my colleagues and my myself uh, didn't recognize the usefulness of the ontology. Why it doesn't work better? Even in even if, if uh, our possibility to publish that paper, <laughs> we have some problems. <laughs> it's also a question for me. And uh, yes, that is, so I would say that is more comment than a question. Um, uh, yes, I think that is a pretty new uh, thing, although there are people that uh, the approach is tested not only in medicine, for example, at the moment we work within another European project that is completely technical. Uh, it is very difficult to recognize the benefits, but it is, I will say, the, the beginning and with the application, at first we have the conceptualize at least a bit of the knowledge, and then we have to, to demonstrate its usefulness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with this project I have been happy because we came to some uh, uh, reasonable decisions, let's say. But what we manage, didn't manage to do in the project, we didn't develop it in the form that it may actually help medical people. And that is the reason that they didn't uh, appreciate the results as we technicians do. That would be perhaps my clarification. 